Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Sarkamish, located in the Kars Oblast, Russian Empire, and involving elements of the Russian and Ottoman Empires on December 22, 1914 through January 17, 1915. The Ottoman Empire, under the direction of Ismail Enver Pasha, the Ottoman War Minister, developed a plan using German and Napoleon tactics to invade Russia. He wanted to use more than 120,000 men to envelope the Russian army. This would require excellent timing between units many miles from each other. This battle would be at the city of Sarkamish in the Sarkamish Pass in the Alakbar Mountains to cut off the Russians. Hassan Izzet, the commander of the Ottoman Third Army, was against this idea and he made it clear he wanted his army to winter in a safe place, rearm, and prepare for spring. To make matters worse, the best soldiers of the Third Army were deployed in Gallipoli and would not be available for this operation. War Minister Pasha believed in his plan so much that he replaced Hassan Izzet and he went with the army and would be part of the invasion of Russia himself. Don't people ever learn that you don't invade Russia in the winter? The battle was a series of skirmishes and fights across the Alkbar Mountains and started when Hafiz Haki, the commander of the left flank of the Ottoman Empire, was ordered to move the 9th and 10th Corps to Sarkamesh. Haki ordered his men forward on December 22nd and started engaging Russian forces near Kalabogazi. Unfortunately for the Turkish forces, they were not equipped for the winter, nor for the high mountain passes they were traveling to. Before any battles were fought, 25,000 Turkish soldiers froze to death. For the next seven days, the Turkish Ottoman troops fought their way towards Sarkamash. The largest battle of note was when on December 23rd, the Turkish 31st Division came across the Turkish Stang Regiment, and they thought they were Russians. The 31st immediately attacked, and a four-hour friendly firefight ensued, killing more than 2,000 Turkish soldiers in the battle, and an unknown number wounded. On December 29th, the Turkish attackers finally reached Sarkamesh and started the attack with 12,000 men. The fighting almost immediately broke down into bayonet street-to-street -street fighting. By the time the Turkish troops broke into the city, only 300 Turkish soldiers still lived. By January 1st, several Turkish units were forced to pull back by losses. This allowed the Russians to move against the flank of the remaining Turkish troops and by January 3rd, the Turks were almost completely encircled by the Russians. As the Russians tightened the noose, the Ottomans began a full retreat from January 4th through the 15th, and by January 18th, the Ottomans were no longer a threat to the Russian Empire as they had returned back to their own lands. Losses for both sides were heavy, with the Russians losing approximately 28,000 men. 16,000 of them were killed or wounded, while 12,000 were incapacitated with being sick. While the Turkish Ottoman Empire suffered far more with 60,000 casualties. This included 43,000 dead, and remember, that 43,000 number included 25,000 that had frozen to death due to lack of supplies before the battle happened itself. In addition, they suffered 10,000 wounded and 7,000 captured. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.